A study by Professor Brandemark, published in 1995, evaluates the rehabilitation with four, five, or six implants. The patients were follow-up for 10 years. The result was that there was no statistical difference between the groups. The studies of Fallon 4 technique started in the early 90s, with the first case being performed in the mandible in 1993. The benefits of a decrease in the cantilever were found in a high success rate. In 1996, it was concluded in the maxilla, and they started to have a lower success rate. It drops to only 70%. Then the possible causes and solutions to optimize success in the maxilla began to be investigated. The design of the dental implant was modified, where the concept of Nobel speed implant was launched. The benefits of seeking a bicorticalization on the floor of nasal cavity and anterior wall of the maxillary sinus, and the concept of a subdrilling or establishing to promote osseocompression compression during implant installation and optimize the insertion torque. Anyway, it took about 10 years to structure the protocol. And from there, the case were selected for scientific validation. Sequentially, studies and evidences appeared. And at the present time, we have a lot of literature supporting us for the success and predictability in predictability of this technique. But the advantages of Alan Ford technique do not end there. We all know that the minimal distance between implants must be at least 3 mm uh, to avoid the chance of saucerization. When 6 to 8 implants are installed, according to the traditional protocol, sometimes there may be a decrease in the distance between these implants, which is not the ideal situation. In addition to potential damage to the perimplant tissue stability, such situations generate uh, numerous areas between implants for the patient to floss, make it very difficult to clean these spaces. Check it out with, with foreign implants, that's, it's more easier to keep it clean. The biomechanics of the future prosthesis are greatly improved when the cantilever is decreased by inclination of the distal implants. You have a huge literature about this. In the mandible, in most cases, it is possible to arrange the implant's head uh, just above the mental foramen. And due to the tilting of these distal implants, it's also possible to use longer implants and still deviate from the mental nerve looping. Substerminatation. This strategy is a common implant surgery. In yellow four technique, it's taken very seriously. To install implants with a thickness of uh, 3.75 mm, Use a drill uh, with the pilot drill, drill 2.0, and a little bit of the pilot drill. And depending on each case, the, the, bo the bone consistency, we can use the drill 2.8 mm. The implant design must be optimized for osteocompensation. Ideally, it should have an active tip, such as the design of Nobel Speedy or Neo Dente EX, uh, among many others available in the market. In the preoperative sequence and prosthetic preparation, there is no difference concerning conventional protocols. Preoperative exams are routinely requested, reverse prosthetic planning is performed, and a complete prosthesis is made within the aesthetic and functional parameters. This prosthesis can be used immediately as a temporary prosthesis, capturing that prosthesis on the titanium cylinders, or you can use it as a multifunctional guide and make the prosthesis with a metal infrastructure. After three months, if necessary, a reshape can be done at the, the bottom of the prosthesis for a better relationship with the, the soft tissues already uh, healed at that time. Does the immediate load they needed to finish in three days? There are always been this concern in the past. It was believed that it was necessary to splint all these implants as early as possible. I have realized in practice that this is not the case. We used to remove the prosthesis routinely to remove the suture in 7 days, and we never had any problems because of that. We have to understand that implants were locked with 35 newtons and, or more. Despite the torque dropping in the postoperative period, to remove and reinstall the prosthesis will give 
the torque about 10 newtons on the prosthesis cylinder screw. There is even a study that reports that there is no difference between uh, this type of protocols for immediate loading. As our confidence in the technique has increased over the years, even in cases of a lot of torque in some patients, we continue to maintain immediate loading and this has not reduced our success rate. I have always believed that torque uh, turning uh, does not occur in the prosthesis in function, besides the union of all components acting as a whole system. More recently, our clinical perceptions was well perceived by others, which just published it, where it was evident that low torque uh, does not uh, decrease the success rate. Now let's look at the technical and clinical concepts for carrying out the standard Allen Ford technique, bone leveling. After local anesthesia, incision, uh, positioned more toward the palatal aspect and total mucoperiosteal detachment, we must make a bone leveling. This leveling can be almost zero in some cases, just smoothing the sharp edges of the residual edge, or it can be quite bulky. How to define the magnitude of this cut? As we are going to perform dental gingival prosthesis, the transition from the artificial gums to natural gums must not be exposed during the smile. Because of that, uh, the essential picture you should take in the preoperative period is a, 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 a shot of your patient smiling without the denture. It is possible to evaluate and record the dynamic of the lips and to quantify how much bone and gingival tissue we have to remove in the time of the surgery. That lack of uh, leveling uh, can also leave little space for the infrastructure, metal infrastructure, to, to put the, all the pink resin and teeth, causing the prosthesis to have some kind of um, extension, uh, overextension, such as mouth flanges, which makes the ability to maintain a proper oral hygiene very, very, very difficult. In some patients, the vertical leveling of the, the residual ridge will be done up to the maximum limit, which in the posterior region, the maxilla, uh, will be until you find a bluish part, start of the maxillary sinus. An essential tip for you not to lose the reference of how much bone you have already removed with what you needed to remove is to wear one M arch at a time, so that other M arch remains with reference. A spatial guide initial drilling reference. The establishment of the spatial orientation is critical. If you lose your, your spatial reference uh, on the perforation to the face, you can completely lose the three-dimensional control of the position of the implants. Look at this picture. Our student installed the straight central implants and tilted the distal implants. Then she called me to see if she could continue with the drilling. In her view, the initial perforation were accurate. However, when we zoom out and see the patient's face as whole, it's clear that the central implants are tilted to the left. This lack of spatial orientation is widespread in those at the beginner level. Such an error in maxilla can make it very, very difficult to, to correct position the distal implants. How to avoid mistakes like that? We, we have two ways to keep oriented during the surgery. Number one, parallel pins. We are all using these uh, straight pins. However, there are also these pins with angle of 17 degree or even 30 degree. Allen Ford guide. It is a specific Allen Ford implant placement guide marketed by Nobel. After doing the initial drilling and installing the parallelized pin, you need to move away from your operative field and look at the patient's face from the front. Being okay, just move on, otherwise, just adjust it. Getting it right is critical. It is through this reference that all other implants will be installed. A vital tip to facilitate the initial drilling with the palatal approach is to invert the position of the handpiece and look the maxilla from the bottom up. With the initial perforation made, we we'll use the 2mm drill that will be deepened until you fall into the void, that is, until you feel that you have completely passed through the nasal cavity cortical floor. We will precisely measure the size of the implant 
that you'll be using in this region. Be aware that in general, if you have drilled until you fall into the nasal cavity, and when you measure it, you have identified that your plant is more than 13 millimeters, you have likely leveled the ridge too little. In this case, level the ridge more and use a maximum 13 millimeter implants. Drilling the distal implants will be performed at 45 degrees uh, to the previous implant. Even when the bone is available at the posterior region of the maxilla, there is a strong tendency for this bone to be on low quality. Another way to orient yourself in the spatial relationship is through a Nobel Alon 4 drilling guide. After the initial drilling, you will install this guide and see how it is positioned concerning the face and whether it is perpendicular positioned with the bipolar plane. You, you have to make some adjustment on it. This guide is flexible and you can shape it according to the shape of the ridge to adjust uh, the tilt of the sagittal direction and so far. In this guide, there are several lines that will serve as reference for the installation of central and distal tilted implants. The most critical point for performing the Alonfort technique is the installation of the posterior implants. Understanding how to drill these implants uh, um, on the anterior wall of the maxillary sinus is an important maneuver. There are some strategies for doing this. Let's check it out.